In previous videos, I have discussed alternative lifestyle communities and the issues that have gone on in and around them. And I briefly touched on drugs in these communities and drug history. And I didn't want to go too much into um, what I meant about that in the context of the communities because uh, the people that come in and out of these communities um, and also the people that set up perhaps individual communities that have these particular problems um, are not representative of everyone. So I didn't want to uh, go further into when I talked about drugs and people's drug history after I talked about how you know that there was the industry of pot in Nimbin uh, I could have led people to believe that the drug history I'm talking about is just pot and if it was just pot I wouldn't be making this video because um, what I've experienced in life is that everyone makes their own choices. They have their own limitations and their own reasons. Now, I've seen a lot of the choices that others have made and the consequences of them. I haven't made those choices myself. Some of them I have. Some of them I thought, well, you know, I'll see what it's like. And... I didn't like it. Now I've included a broad range of what I consider to be, um, well, drugs. First of all, I'm, I've probably given you an impression of what society would classify as drugs. I do not classify drugs probably in the same way as a dictionary does. I classify drugs as anything that has been refined by man for a particular purpose. So you have plants that are natural. They are not drugs. They may have chemicals and constituents in them that have been identified by science as having particular effects that they would classify under some law they made up and some name that says it's a drug and because it's got that in there, we're going to take that plant away from you. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because, you know, most people tend to think that it's only the cannabis plant that is being denied humanity. But even in Australia, if you go and have a look at the um, banned plants list, uh, it's pretty extensive. And it does deny you um, your right, your born right to all the bounties of the earth and pretty much even on the first page of the bible it says you know the herbs of the earth are given to mankind so basically everything that's on the planet belongs to everybody and it's for no man to deny another now down here i've got a look a picture of poppies um, been born and bred in Tasmania I can tell you all about poppies you could jump the fence and pick them if you wanted to if you wanted to if you were stupid enough to but um, my point is that these things are there as what we use in a society all these poppies are grown in Tasmania for the medical industry for the drug industry so they can then take that natural product and go and refine it and make all these different things. Now some of these other different drugs on here actually come from that poppy. And I'm not going to um, look down at people that take heroin or poppies or what, whatever form they take it in, but it's not a choice I'm going to make. I mean, when I was a kid, I heard that someone... Uh, smoked up banana peels and they went blind and I've heard of people that have jumped the fence and um, 
they don't understand that these poppies are highly concentrated any heroin that you might get on the street is very very cut down and um, people have died so there's a whole thing about um, what a drug is and what a plant is and there are plenty of things out there I mean I could serve you up green potato soup and kill you because the uh, green is actually toxic and poisonous when a potato goes green you don't want to be eating that so there are many things out there that can kill us and human beings over the years thousands and thousands and thousands of years of trial and error have um, found out what works and what doesn't they've found out what heals what goes on the outside what goes on the inside and basically there's a whole natural side of medicine that was replaced because man came along and said well we can't really make money out of plants but if we process it refine it and sell it as a drug and control it we can then patent it and then we'll make the plants illegal so that people can't access that and make it for themselves that they'll have to come through us and we'll control that whole system now as you can see they've already done that with quite a few products they did that with alcohol and alcohol is essentially um, a drug that is made from a natural product so they took the natural product and they processed it then they banned it then they with uh, the cannabis they banned it because of its very well known mental effects now I could bring out Molly Greaves Modern Herbal a book that I bought um, 40 odd years ago and it's it's thick and it's very intensive and it's not like the online version it's got um, a lot more detail and referencing in there and when this book was written it was written more in the context of when it wasn't villainized and turned into something that it wasn't it was used widely for um, mental health issues there is something in the plant that um, acts on agitated nerves to help settle them essentially it creates a good sense of well-being so they villainized that and illegal made the plant illegal and now they've started to introduce the medical use of it so again they've turned it from a herb or a plant or a natural product processed it and putting it through an industry that is then regulated and controlled and the original product is banned now there are a lot of things that like uh, you look at the middle you can see cigarettes now a lot of people think they're dirty disgusting things and most of them are actually filled with so many chemicals they are but the government actually allowed for those chemicals to go in so they're actually responsible for the poisoning of you in putting that in there they know the effects of it but uh, you try and grow a tobacco plant you'll get into more trouble for growing a tobacco plant than you would if you grew a pot plant or a um, poppy it is a highly regulated industry and you will go to jail if you're caught growing a tobacco plant no ifs ands or buts about it and there is very little illegal trade in tobacco so there is very little people that are actually growing the plant so the access to the plant has virtually disappeared well in some countries anyway I mean there are countries that I saw this what I considered quite a gross thing the other day where there's this uh, culture um, tribe somewhere I can't even remember where it was but they've been doing this for you know ever since they can remember they've been going out there they get the tobacco plant they roll the leaves up and they make it into like this mush kind of thing and they stick it in their mouth um, right where you know if you have a heart pill you stick it there so it goes straight to your heart so they have this great big gob in their mouth and they suck on it and they get that effect and they walk around with it for hours and then they'll take it out and they'll give it to somebody else they share it around 
I mean, it's a gross concept, but if you actually think about it, they've all been exposed to the same germs, so they've got a pretty healthy immune system. But I just wanted to talk more about the drugs in this instance, not uh, try and get too sidetracked, because when I talk about people's drug histories, I talk about the choices that they've made and how many different things they've actually tried and used long term. There is a big difference between someone that might try something once and go, oh, that's shit, and never go near it again, than to someone that uh, has it once and says, yeah, I like that, and does it for the next 10 years. There are long-term effects for all of these things. And, I mean, I'm a pretty natural girl. I, you, I won't even take cough medicines or Panadol. And pretty much I resist taking anything that Big Pharma put out. I don't trust what they make. Nature makes a plant and makes it balanced. And as soon as man takes one component and then tries to use that component for a particular profit, that's where side effects come in. All those side effects is because what you've now got is no longer balanced and man doesn't have the knowledge to balance it. So yes, there are side effects with all natural ones. You know, we all know that these things can kill you. I mean, anything, even if it's not toxic, if you take too much of it, it can be toxic. So it all comes down to common sense and personal choices and really, how much or how little you may know about something. And I mention that because my kids are grown up now, but uh, we, when we lived uh, near the Gold Coast and it was coming up to they were going to go to schoolies on the Gold Coast next year and I was getting a little bit worried because the drug scene had completely changed. There was crack. DMT, ecstasy, ice, all these things that I didn't really know what they were. I, and I knew that the kids knew more than me. And that's when I thought, well, you know, I've really got to look into these other things and, and find out what's going on. And um, they were the ones that told me that they weren't interested in going to schoolies because, um, well, that year someone had um, been handing out what they thought were echoes or taking echoes. Um, they were asthmatic, had an, uh, an allergic reaction to it and died. And there were a couple of instances where people nearly did because, you see, the thing is that when you're buying an illegal drug, you don't know the manufacturer. And I know people that have sold off, um, they've got, uh, taken Serapax diet pills, scraped the outside off them when they used to have pink coating on them, crushed them down and sold it for speed. So people thought they were buying speed in, and they weren't, they were buying diet pills. And this is the reason why I've also got legal drugs on there, because it's not just illegal drugs that make for a drugged fucked idiot okay there's legal drugs and pretty much the legal drugs have been the ones that have stuffed up a lot of the individuals that I've encountered and because of the psychotropic nature of antidepressants I mean the thing is that um, I tried antidepressants once in my life after I had my daughter, I had a caesarean and um, that brought a lot of fears into play and it, it just sort of, my mind just sort of didn't want to be in my body for a while. It, it When I was going through it, the only way I could cope with what was going and still being awake while it was going on was to sort of leave my body in a way. and. I didn't quite come back in in a way. I couldn't 
cope with the reality of it. Uh, I still even find it hard to talk about it. It makes me oosh. But anyway, so it did a little number on, on my mind. And the doctor said, you know, try them. And I, I didn't really want to try them because I know what they are. And I thought, well, look, I criticise them, but I don't actually know, do I? So in the spirit of, well, I'll find out if they might work for me. And after taking them for two weeks, I stopped taking them and I would never, ever take them again because I did not like what it did to me. See, when you take something that is an antidepressant, it is affecting a part of your brain. It it creates apathy. I mean, you know that there are problems and worries going on around you, but you don't feel anything. You know, it doesn't bother you. You don't care. It creates apathy. And I've just had um, a baby girl. She's beautiful. She needs me. And I'm apathetic. And... Uh, and even in that state, I could realize that I'm apathetic. It doesn't matter to me, but there's this part of me that, well, is me, that was being overridden by this thing that's saying, this is just all wrong. This is, you know what, I'd much rather be crazy or depressed than to not feel anything. And that's my choice. But in doing that, um, I, my mum was still alive and I told her when I went on the antidepressants and I didn't realise just how much of a stigma in society it was that mum then confessed to me now mum and I used to be so open about so many things and she'd share so many things with me just about anything and everything so when she told me that she'd been on antidepressants for ten or so years I was really shocked but in another way I wasn't because I wondered how did mum cope she didn't drink she wasn't you know taking any of these illegal drugs so how was she coping and I was to find out that mum like many of her friends cope by being on antidepressants and for all those years you know I'd think that you know, I'd get upset over something and mum would just go, well, you know, <laughs> and her attitude a bit about it, it's like, well, I understand now because it's that apathetic. Even though you understand and you know you should be probably getting upset about it, you're just not and you can't be. And it's that kind of denial of your own emotions that is really wrong when it comes to drugs. And this is a medical industry. This is big pharma. This isn't illegal drugs. But most of these people that overdose on um, illegal drugs end up in some kind of a mental institution, health institution. Some of them, you know, they have real long-term mental health problems. They're in and out of mental institutions all their life. And when the community I went to that I've talked about in, in previous videos, I was the only person there that hadn't been into a mental institution. I was the only person that hadn't made the choices that had gone down this cocktail mix of screw your mind up, you know, lose yourself. Because uh, the reason that I ever started to smoke pot was never to get high. It was to actually slow me down. I was probably your original ADD or bipolar or whatever you, name you want to put on it. Um, it's the only thing that slows me down. Back in those days, doctors couldn't help me. You know, my mind worked so, so quickly. Everything worked so quickly that... And everything in society works so slowly. And there was this tension that I couldn't keep up with everything. I first started smoking cigarettes 
that slowed me down a little bit but it wasn't quite enough and when someone introduced me to pot that slowed me down I could actually get my thoughts together so that they weren't all competing to come out at once and believe it or not I could could focus and that's why no one's ever picked me for a, a pot smoker over the years because it has the opposite effect on me than what it has on most people it does not scatter my mind it slows down my thoughts enough so that they ha they are something that I can express to others I mean I can live inside my own head and have a million thoughts and it doesn't matter but I've got to live in this world I've got to communicate and get on with other people so being able to slow myself down to bring myself to that level is something I needed to do and I also found that it got rid of um, uh, the digestive problems that I'd been having there was a very real medicinal effect from me long before I ever you know knew it was illegal or all the things it could or it couldn't do I experienced it for myself and then when I found out it was illegal I thought well this is just wrong because if it wasn't illegal you could use that like any other herb and put it in your food because smoking it and eating it are two different things and honestly I'd prefer if I could eat it if I could cook with it because smoking even though it's something that human beings have done for tens of thousands of years they've smoked something you know, cigarettes is just the latest thing that has been more well, villainized um, this wasn't meant to turn into a you know legalize hemp or any of the other plants that are illegal debate or conversation or justification I'm just stating that there are many things that are in our environment that no man has the right to deny another and it really is that simple so any of these plants I, I'm not going to touch your poppies no way I won't go near them I've tried your mushrooms but um, if you don't get the right ones well that's why you know it's something that I haven't tried very much of um, your, your pot is very easy to grow it's an annual plant and it does grow like a weed tobacco well I don't think I'd, I'd bother with that one now you've got uh, peyote I have never tried wouldn't even know how to get hold of peyote and ayahuasca well um, again I wouldn't know how to really get hold of that now when I did talk about Nimbin and the drug trade there and the laneway boys and I said that they came to taste all their delights um, and I said you know pot uh, it's more than pot that they offer I mean you have to consider that there's kind of like independent local uh, and sellers that come to that area they they work together some of them are purely pot and some of them uh, they will sell all these other powdery and you know, you've got your acid drips you've got ice crack eckers and DMT I mean um, did I say mushrooms yeah mushies I mean pretty much um, there's a, a guy in the laneway there that could have helped you now this was years ago it is not now I have no idea what it's like now because um, I moved away from the area it had changed and it, it the town itself was divided when I said it was a um, hippie town a modernized hippie town I'd say it's modernized because of all the other drugs in there the the chemical shit that really stuffs people up and it sends them off I mean there was one person there that came back I don't know what she'd had one night but 
Oh, she'd just be screaming and screeching like some harpy, carrying on with all this shit, waking everybody up, and then people would go try and calm her down, she'd tell them to fuck off, and it's like, oh, seriously, can someone gag her? I don't care. If you want to go and have that shit, go have it and don't affect me with it, you know? But there, that's not enough. So there are some really broken individuals, not only in um, Australian culture, but in tribal culture as well, you know? It, it cross, these drugs are not racist. They don't care who you are. And some of these are only on here because only one particular side actually goes for them. Like the reason I've got an aerosol there is because in Nimbin, that's what they do. There's some of them that go around. They've got um, your little fire campers that you have your little gas cylinders for. They don't use it to light little camper fires. They inhale them. And there's one guy there that he's done it so much that his voice box, um, he sounds worse than Alex Jones. I mean, I've never heard a voice like that before. You can barely understand him. And that's just from the recent long-term use of that. This guy's, you know, um, easily in his 50s and he's done everything else on this page pretty much that he could get his hands on uh, in the past, including the petrol sniffing. So there is, as I said, um, a lost soul element to all these places and when I'm talking about people's drug histories I'm not talking about pot smokers I'm talking about people that have mixed it all up and have just lived a, a pretty big life of variations of all of these different things and your alcoholics too I'm, I've put them in there because Please do not underestimate alcoholics. And I'd have to say that alcoholics are better than... I've met ex-junkies, ex-speed freaks and all of these different types. And in all their worst hours, I'd never seen them lie and bullshit and con people as much as what alcoholics did. And I suppose because the alcoholism is something that you can have in public that you know it allowed for it to be more and more and maybe more people are alcoholics than they are drug fucked idiots I don't know but alcoholism and people that are alcoholics you've got to watch them because uh, I know that this one guy that I talked about um, that I, he's not sitting right with me at the moment, this guy that I've called Morgan, he's an alcoholic. Now, he might not drink alcohol now, but a, an alcoholic is someone that has probably got a pretty stuffed liver and they've gone through a lot of brain damage. I mean, we all know that every time you... Like, sometimes... You know, I'd go out one night and I'd say, well, there goes a few brain cells. That's because I had too much to drink. You know, I know the consequences of, you know, party hard, lose the brain cells. So I'm not going to risk that. I want to have fun, but I don't want to end up stupid or a vegetable or crazy and in a nut house. Um, but other people do go there. And alcohol alcoholics as I said are the worst con men liars I've ever met I mean they could sell a fridge to the Eskimos you know they are that good at it and they know what to say how to manipulate you you think that they've killed off enough brain cells to be dumb but they've trained themselves to be what they are it is habit Okay, it's habit. They don't need to think about it. It is a process. They want something. They they just go about what they've always what they know. It comes naturally. They don't even have to stop and think about a lie. It's just there, ready on their tongue. And that's a big difference between your alcoholics and your drug fucked idiots. Is 
most of them will actually tell you a very different story. They will open up and confess and be very honest about it. Uh, yes, there's that element of a lot of them are going to lie to to get uh, money off people because they need to get a fix and go get that. I mean, but once they're over that, there's that honesty level that comes in that I have never seen with alcoholics. And even recently, I uh, came across someone that I knew years ago, someone I was actually engaged to, and he's an alcoholic. And it uh, is a very sad thing to see. I mean, alcoholism creates kind of split personalities. Now, this guy is an active alcoholic. He's not a reformed alcoholic. But it really doesn't matter because the damage, long-term damage is already there. Even if he stopped now, he'd still be skitsy because uh, he's also one of these ones that I watched make bad choices. And also another reason why I, I called off the engagement and moved state. Because, uh, as I said, other people's choices were not and are not mine. Now, I'm putting this all out there because, you know, I know that there's a lot of straighties out there that would not understand much of any of this have seen it known it or experienced anyone that's gone through it maybe recently because of the um, the illegal crack ice ecstasy and all these other ones these artificial ones they're really stuffing people up they they're quicker at breaking down the mind and creating um, mental disorders than long-term use is. Like I'm essentially seeing in younger people that have been on these things for a short period of time, I'm starting to see what I see in others as long-term effects. So essentially these drugs that have come out in the illegal market today are an acceleration of brain damage and drug fuckness. Sorry to be so blunt with my words, but, um, you know, sometimes I, I dance around too much trying to be careful about what words I'm going to say to, you know, that I don't get censored or, you know, I'm not going to upset someone or, you know, I'm not going to reveal someone's name when I shouldn't or... And I have to consider the consequences too, that I do know that um, I've had to be very careful about what I've said about communities, especially when I know that um, other people have been sued for speaking out against them. So I'm not, not that they've got anything they can take from me, but I don't need that shit. So I just, yeah, you know, beat around the bush and say things to a certain degree. But when I don't have to beat around the bush, it's just going to come out as I'm going to say it. And when I say someone's drug fucked, it's because they are. They're completely fucked. They might have an appearance where they can, you know, function in life. But I have met individuals that seriously, you know, um, well, the last guy, Alan Hamer, that I did in a previous video, I looked at just after I uploaded the video on him and it looks like the mental health police had caught up with him again and they'd come to arrest him and uh, it's like yeah well this happens because there's all these mental health issues around a lot of the people in these alternative lifestyles that have led these pretty heavy drug lives a life and they've they've got a different mentality for it um i mean there was a, a woman that i met in um, nimbin she was an alcoholic she never went anywhere near any of the other stuff and she was a lovely woman but oh when she was really drunk she was so painful and it was like you know i don't drink i haven't you know, I partied hard when I was younger. I had my kids and 
after I had um, my major accident, uh, my liver can't take it anyway, and I'm past it. So even if I did want to drink, I can't drink. And the only way you can actually handle a drunk is to be drunk yourself. So um, when you're sober and you've got another drunk around you telling you how much they love you and thank you and drooling all over you and dribbling the shit that you dribble in the pub to other people when you're drunk like that, but that's cool because you're both on the same level. You know, <laughs> when you're out in the streets in normal everyday life, um, no, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't operate on that level. And the only reason I would go and get drunk, so blind rotten drunk, was because I, I'm an introvert and I find it very hard to crack that shell and get talking to people. After a few drinks and a couple of B-52s, I'm firing, I'm charging and I'm your extrovert. So yeah, I had a party hard life when I was younger and people might think, well, I've, I've brain, brain damaged myself. Well, yes, as I said before. Every time I'd go out and party hard, I'd go, well, there's a few brain cells gone. But then that's for you to decide in listening to me. Whether you've got the brain cells that are on the same wavelength or not. I mean, I've been through choices. I haven't had the brain damage occurred from the medical industry, I can tell you that much these antidepressants and the antipsychotics and your Panadols and all of these things. My body has not been polluted by that, neither has my mind. If I get a headache, I put up with the headache. I find out what caused the headache and usually it's because uh, they stuffed up my neck when I was 10 in an operation and I've had a bad back. So usually a headache's going to be from neck tension, release the neck tension, do something about that, the headache goes. But all these things, um, like your Panadol, is just a mask. It doesn't get rid of, of what, you've, what the problem is. And this is where the natural products are designed to be utilised. All of the natural products that are available to us. So that we can use them all as an integrated system to help su support us in every asset of our physical and mental and spiritual health. And this guy that I've called Morgan before that's confessed he's an alcoholic, uh, he's also a long-term pot smoker, um, shared an experience about where he whited out on DMT. He overdosed on it. Um, people thought he'd actually died on it. So he decided he wasn't going to do that again. If he wanted to go on a spiritual journey, he wasn't going to take it from the elders in the area or trust them. He wanted to go to Peru and go with Ayahuasca. And then he tells the story about how he goes to Ayahuasca and blah, 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 and he ends up on this incredible journey and everything. So this person, before they've even got to the Ayahuasca, has already been through a majority of things on this page They've been a musician that says they've travelled the world and partied hard, sex, drugs and rock and roll. So this alcoholic, as I said, good con men alcoholics, they tell you what you want to hear too. And uh, to all intensive purposes, this guy does tell me everything I want to hear. And he's motivating people the way I want them to be motivated. All right, fair enough, there are things that I know that he's... He's uh, deliberately altering the narrative on and swaying it in different directions. But overall, he's bringing awareness to a larger people of general broad things that this is why I'm giving him a pseudonym and I'm not going to name him because I'm going to let him keep going and doing what he's doing. It's not up to me to stop him. It's up to each of us to actually consider who we're listening to and the information that they're giving us and is the information they're giving us is it something they've given us ten times a hundred times a thousand times before or are they giving us something new are they adding something to what I need to know because if people are not adding to your experience if they're only just bringing to you the same old same old every day you need to shake it up a bit
you're getting stuck in a habit, you're getting lulled into complacency, and you're not thinking for yourself, okay? So you need to think for yourself. And no matter what drug you are on, if you are on a legal drug, an illegal drug, whether you consider yourself an alcoholic because you drink wine every night or not, or you don't consider yourself a drug user because the doctor gave you a script, I guarantee you every single person out there has got some way to deal with the stress in this world because it is so fucked up. We have to medicate ourselves because the world is fucked up. So what we need to do is get rid of the fucked up world and stop medicating ourselves. Then we'd be happy. It's all back to front. Now there are people out there that, and this is where I gave up on the, the new age community. I'm going to sit and meditate and contemplate my navel and I'm going to get back to nature and blah 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 and all of that. And all these techniques about, uh, you know, oh, but you've got to go out into the real world, just be your higher and better self. But you know what, you do that all the time and you end up getting used by people. This is how come I've had so many bad experiences in my life because I go out there and I'm the better person. I give to people, I'm the giver. Well, I found there's a lot of takers and when there's nothing left to take, they spit you out. And uh, it's not a very nice world. So, whatever you're medicating yourself on, whether you're medicating yourself on meditation, legal or illegal drugs of one form or another, you still need to be in charge of your own self. You need to get it together in your own mind have your own thoughts. Listen to what others have got to say. But also be careful of the ones that you get drawn into and constantly listen to. Because this guy that, as I said, I'm not going to name him, even though he's using a pseudonym. I don't want to, you know, <laughs> rock the boat, as I said. I want him to keep going and waking people up. It's not up to, to him or to me, really, to say to people, this is wrong, even though he puts a lot of the information out as, I know it as a fact. It's a fact because, and it's like, well, it's a fact because you decided that in your opinion, with your critical thinking, knowing what you know, you decided it's a fact. But it's not actually a fact for me because the facts for me have been different. So when I hear someone keep talking about, oh, it's a fact, it's a fact, it's a fact, it's like, well, no, that's just your opinion. And it does bother me that there are so many out there that will hear that. It's a fact that, and people just go with that information because that has been prefaced with, it's a fact that, and don't check it. See, if I say something, if I say, well, you know, in fact, I fully expect people to go out there and check for themselves. I don't expect you to take my word for anything. Why would you? I mean, come on, are you stupid? You need to think for yourself. All right, I didn't want to <laughs> call people stupid. Now I'm sounding like the very people I'm object objecting about. But when I'm calling you stupid, uh, I have to tell you that, you know, when I do something stupid, I actually call myself stupid. Because stupid is stupid, you know. And I've done a lot of stupid things. And I've put myself in stupid situations because I trusted people and I had this ideal. And I didn't want to see the reality. And it leaves you open for a whole heap of experiences that... Um, you know what, you don't want to really have. But in hindsight, I'm glad I did have them because they are experience. And good or bad, they are experience. It has given me eyes to see. So 
in showing what I've experienced through my eyes and for those that probably have never even encountered that shadow part of their society and, and would have no clue about what goes on in a large part of the society you don't even see. Anyone that's a pot smoker knows, you know, that every country, every place in the world, has, well, except where it's deadly, but even then they still have their illegal trade and they have other drugs. I mean, you know, you have to consider that in some countries it's not even illegal, it grows wild. That's why people go to Thailand and places like that because it just grows as a wild plant. It is not denied mankind there. And this, as I, as I said, this goes back to a completely different subject about the drugs itself. And But if it comes in natural form, it is up to adults to make decisions. It is not up to us to make those decisions for them. When they start turning them into chemicals and products and drugs and uh, that's when it really does start to create problems because as I've explained well the very first thing I looked at when I left school because they didn't teach me anything I wanted to I looked at plants I wanted to know how plants worked and get inside them because they're all different which meant that they all had you know something different about them and what was that and so I went looking for it. And every plant has got its active and uh, constituents, what makes up that plant. And modern science has come along with a lot of them and done a chemical analysis of it and identified what all of them are. And they've said, right, we've got this whole plant with, you know, a thousand different things in it and we're going to take this one thing out, we're going to pull it out because that's the one that works and we're going to make this drug um, let's say oxycodone we're going to make a very strong painkiller and we're going to um, wrap it up in a package dilute it right down we're going to m fill it up with mainly powder and talc and all this other stuff that um, is not actually the drug so you're actually swallowing more filler than the actual drug Now, once you've taken that little isolated element out of that other thousand that balance it, all your side effects really start to mount up. You're looking at exponential side effects. See, nothing in nature works alone in isolation. So when they give you something that is in isolation, it needs other things to make it work properly. Like uh, years ago, I found out that um, you need at least 99% uh, fat in something to consume the calcium out of it. Um, I probably haven't explained that very well, but uh, it was a concept that came into um, something I knew because they'd introduced 98% uh, fat-free reduced milk with um, added calcium and mum was taking uh, drinking that milk and taking calcium tablets to strengthen her bones and I said to her mum none of that's going to make any difference because you actually need the fat content in the milk uh, to carry the calcium into the bones it, if you take all the fat out, um, there's n the calcium just goes into your, you know, you, you're consuming it and it comes straight back out. It's not actually going into your bones. It's not going to where it can be used because the carrier for it that, that takes it in the fat, it can't attach to it and get taken in. So essentially, you're just drinking diluted milk that is even worse for you than if you just drank full cream milk. So when it comes down to it, I'm always going to trust something that nature produced because it was produced in balance. And even though there are known side effects of these natural things, 
we can control them. What we can't control is our individual reaction to one component out of a thousand taken out of context put into our body and it doesn't have the means to cope with it or if it I mean this is where they have to list such a broad broad range of side effects because it is an individual thing how just taking that one component of a whole plant is going to affect you and also the, the fillers and the artificial things that they put in it as well, how that will affect you. Because um, anyone that's allergic to um, bees is going to have a really hard time with a lot of medications because uh, there is a component, and eggs too, sorry, uh, not sorry, and eggs, because they, they um, gestate a lot of the things in eggs because of the, I suppose, stem cells that eggs offer. It, it creates the, the virus. Well, most viruses and vaccines, I'm pretty sure, have, got, um, have been cultured in eggs. And um, bees, there are, um, there's a certain thing about um, some products I can't get. I couldn't explain it now, but yeah, people that have have allergies to bees need to be careful about what medications they take too, because of um, what's in them. But if you went up and you picked, um, say, a tomato out of your garden, you're not going to worry too much about it. Or even if you dug up a potato out of your garden that had a bit of green on the outside, you're going to peel it back and eat it, and and you're not going to worry about it. But when you don't know what an isolated constituent of a plant is going to do to you, you're better to just leave all that stuff alone and go with nature because nature has it balanced in the first place. Man hasn't even got it close. I mean, mum could take 50 pills a day. You know, she'd, she'd jingle like a Smarties jar with all the pills that she could take because... Oh, take one pill, need to take another pill to counteract the side effects of that pill, take another pill to counteract the side effects of that pill, and all these pills that counteract the side effect of this pill. That's because they haven't given you something that's balanced like nature has. Now, saying all that, I've probably gone too far. They don't like natural stuff on uh, YouTube, do they? Anyway... I think I've said enough about all my experiences and how I feel on that and shared it all with everybody. Um, and I'll leave it at that and give you something to think about at least. Catch you next time.